Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening to FASA Coliseum participants and YouTube live viewers. Grateful to God Almighty that with his blessings we are able to gather virtually tonight. I'm Sarah, your host for today. So this is the first time ever Faculty of Science Students Association FASA held an online quiz competition. So this is a game show. Okay, this is the birth of FASA Coliseum, which is uh, open to all undergraduates from Faculty of Science. So to conduct the quiz, we'll be using quizzes as our main platform. The quiz questions incorporate topics from biology, chemistry, uh, mathematics, and physics as a whole. No worries, the questions are, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's kind of easy, right? So for your information, we have around 200 participants competing against each other to qualify for next round, all right? Only 20 um, participants will go to the second round. First competition, huh? Okay, so dear participants, please check our WhatsApp group for the link so that you can access the quizzes. And my dear YouTube viewers, if you have any question about the quiz, feel free to put it in the chat box. So we will have a Q&A segment at the end of the session. Okay, I will introduce our panel that will be with us tonight. Firstly, I introduce you, Chelsea from Department of Biology. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Chelsea. Wow, so yellow tonight. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Biology, go biology. All right, we're going to welcome someone from the Department of Chemistry, Nor Aisha Nabila. Hi. <laughs> hi, okay. Aisha, our future chemist. Oh my God, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. I mean, now we're going to um, introduce Faris from the Department of Physics. Hi, good evening. Hi, Faris. Wow. Okay, okay. Nice. Are you wow. ready for tonight? Are you ready for tonight? I, I feel so excited already. Oh, wow. Well, you're, you're excited. Too All right. Well, well, good. Yeah. good to hear that. Okay, we're going to introduce our last panel, Aina Anissa from Department of Mathematics. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Hi, Aina. Hi, All Aina. right. After each question answered by the participants, our panel will give the explanation. I mean, guys, look at your faces. They look so smart, right? I'm intimidated. I'm so scared right now. <laughs> okay, so while we wait for all participants to enter the room, let's watch a teaser video prepared by our committee. Roll in the video, please. Okay, wow, the video is so futuristic, right? Nice. I'm pretty sure that the participants are eager to start the quiz. So without further ado, shall we start the countdown? I mean, panel, can you please come with me? Okay, we're going to start from five, four, three, two, and one. Roll in the questions. Okay, we're going to start, guys. I'm excited. <laughs> Ooh, All right, wow, first question. Okay, which one of these is the largest number? So we have four answers. 4,277, is it 4,299, or is it 4,300, or maybe it's the last one? Um, guys, if you know the, the answer, you can, I don't know, you can flex the answer 2020. 
<laughs> oh my god okay okay, okay. let's see oh wow okay biology is leading the little boy go bio <laughs> all right so 49 participants got this question correct okay Aina, can you I don't know, explain the question please it seems that this question is easy because everyone got the answer right so <laughs> So for the explanation, there's four digits of numbers for this answer, right? So to decide which one is the largest, we have to look at the place value, which there's thousands, hundreds, and tens, and ones. So for this question, the first place, which is thousand, which all the answer is four. And we have to look at the hundredth place, which is the largest from at the hundredth place, which is, which is three. So that's why we choose C, the answer, which is 4,300. Congrats for who correct the answer. All right. Thank you, Nation. Next question. Let's take a look at the second question. Shall we? Is it biology question? Okay, what is the outermost layer of human skin? Is it epidermis, gastrodermis, epidermis, or hyperdermis? Uh, my students, if you're watching this, you can comment in the comment section. Come on, guys, show your knowledge. All right, time's up. Let's see who's on fire. All right, two zero seven nine one one chemistries. The first one in the leaderboard. All right, okay, Chelsea, please. Yeah, sir. I expect a biology student to get the first <laughs> place, but mm -mm, chemistry. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. So <laughs> I think that this question might be a bonus question for the uh, contestant today. You know. Um, all right, so the answer is epidemics and all of them like choosing epidemics good. Okay, why? Um, okay, the keyword for this question is the outermost layer of human skin. All right, we have uh, three main layers of human skin. We have epidemics at the outermost and the second is dermis and the third or the deepest layer is subcutis or also we know as hypodermis. So subcutis and hypodermis can't be the answer. And gastrodermis is not a part of human skin. It is a lining membrane of the elementary tract of an uh, invertebrate. For example, jellyfish or coral. So the perfect answer for this question will be epidermis. So yeah. All I right. Nice explanation. So 57 people got this question correct. Okay, <laughs> there's one people who answer hypodermis. It's okay, you can do better. Next question. All right, let's roll to the next question. Yes, I can see Patim Yan commented. Epidermis is correct. <laughs> All right, what is the smallest building block of the alien makeup universe? Atom? Planet? A cell? Proton? Hmm, we'll see the answers. Six seconds left. Time's up. All right. Okay, wow, chemistry is still leading. Okay, I see you, sis. Oh, okay, Aisha, can you please explain why an atom is the smallest building block? Okay, why is an atom is the smallest building block of element that make up the universe? And I can see that most of you guys answer this question is correct because I think that this question is easy for you guys. Okay, the answer is an atom because an atom is the smallest unit uh, that maintain of all the elements in this world. In the end, the answer is not proton. I see that maybe most of you guys confused because the uh, proton is not the answer because proton is in the atom and atom is the one that make up the universe and the proton cannot make up the universe itself so because it is in the atom and that's the answer and i was a little bit sure that cell is not the smallest building block that make up the universe the universe okay guys <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you aisha but okay um other than proton what's the other two things in atom that you can find in an atom 
other than proton is neutron and also proton eh neutron and proton eh neutron and electron <laughs> oh my god oh, okay she got confused already all right yeah. okay nice okay move on to the next question Okay, a unit length of 1,000 of a meter is called a millimeter. Is it true or is it false? Huh, Nagan Nag Nag do you want to try answer this question? <laughs> Maybe you can get this time correct. Alright, time's up. Wow, who is this 207911? Wow, I mean, he or she is so smart. On fire. All right, Faris, please yeah. explain the question. Uh, okay. Yes. All right, thank you, Sarah. Um, okay, this question is quite simple one because it's more like understanding of the simplified mathematical terms. So 1,000 of a meter basically means 1 divided by divided by 1,000, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And milli is the prefix for that question. So milli is the correct one, true. So I'm looking forward for the physics. <laughs> Come on, physics, show your power. Okay, we'll see. Let's go to the next question. Alright, so what is the general characteristic of noble gas? Highly reactive, is it colorful or inert? Hmm. Seven seconds left. <laughs> Alright, time's up. Okay, Aisha, please. Please lead the way. Okay, for this question, I can see that chemistry is still the first because I think that this is the easy question for you. Okay, uh, first of all, I want you to know that noble gas is an element in group 18 in the product table. And it was really re rarely react with other elements because it's already stable. And the noble gas is the most stable due to have the, have the maximum number of electrons in the outermost shell. And noble gas is uh, mostly known as inert gas and not is highly reactive and also colorful because highly reactive is for the element in group 16 which is the halogen because they or because they readily get electron and react with other elements and for the colorful characteristic it is the characteristic for transition metal is the predictable mm -hmm. okay so can you give me an example like what's a noble gas Oh, example for noble gas is uh, helium, argon, krypton, and that. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Okay, next question, please. Okay, which of these numbers are in ascending order? Okay, remember it's in ascending order not descending all right guys don't get confused eight seconds left oh my god now gendron says we still have to perform don't worry la, we start to perform flex la, flex <laughs> okay okay so number one is still from chemistry. Number second place, biology student. Yes, biology student. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is the easy question, but what? Why does one person wrong answer? So what is ascending order? Ascending ascending order, which is a number that arranged from the smallest to the largest. So from this answer, we can see that number C arranged from the smallest to the largest, which 20 is the, last, the smallest numbers and 30 is the small the largest numbers. If the question asks you um, to, to, to arrange number in descending order, the answer will be D. 
if this sending. All right. That's I all. believe that one person careless mistake, right? Okay, let's go to the next question. Is it questions from chemistry? Is it from maths? Okay, what is the hair like structures that extend from paramecium species for locomotion? So, this is biology question. Is it flagella, cilia, contractor, echo, colored? I don't know. Do you know, my students? Okay, time's up. We'll see. Wow, Matt. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. Chelsea, I can't wait to hear your explanation. Please. Yeah, I'm Sarah. All right. So, as we can see from uh, the result, we can see that most, that like the most highest one is the flagella I see I can understand why they why they choose flagella because this uh, flagella and cilia is for locomotion both but the question here uh, it asks for hair like structure and also it asks for paramecium species so uh, if there if the, uh, the participant know about the paramecium structure itself then there will be no uh, difficulties to answer the question all right and the second keyword that we need to view is the hair like structure all right the cilia it it is for locomotion and paramecium use uh, cilia for locomotion and cilia ha uh, have a hair like structures whereas for uh, flagella it has a whip like structure and paramecium don't have flagella so yes that is why the answer will be Celia and not Flagella. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next question, please. <laughs> Round of 3.869 to the nearest head. Is it 3.87? 3.9 4 3.96 hmm i guess the answer is all right time's up okay aina get ready okay so we have new people leading 203063 max okay aina please explain how to run off this thing Wow, okay, this question involves decimal numbers. So we need to know the place value of these numbers. This question might be easy, but some of the people will quite confused from this question. So for this question, for number three, which is in a place value of ones, and there's is decimal point. And after decimal point is the number eight, which for place value of tens, Six for hundreds, nine for thousands, and four, which is for ten thousands. So for this question, ask to run off the nearest tens, which is the number eight. Number eight. We firstly we have to look at the place value, which is beside the ten num tens, which is six in hundreds. Since number six is more than five. Hence, we must add one to the, to the tens place value, which that's why the answer is 3.9. Eight plus one is nine. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Aina. So, Amazon, do you understand? You don't have to square root for this question. Okay. Can we go to the next question, please? <laughs> Alright, which law states that a point in a fluid is equal to a direction? So this is physics question. Pascal's law, Boyle's law, Newton's cycle law, or maybe it's Charles law. Hmm. Three seconds on the clock. Alright, time's up. Okay. 
Okay. Oh. Well, physics, <laughs> second place. Yeah. I can see yeah. now. I can see now. Go physics. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this question is normally easy. I would say easy because there are, there will be two two kind of question in physics. There will be factual and there will be calculation. For this kind of question, it's more like factual. So we need to look at the definition of the answer. So as we look refers to the all the answers, we may see that the correct one is Pascal because. Pascal law state that the pressure at a point in a fluid is equal to normal force exerted by fluid on a small surface at that point per area of the surface. So congratulations to the one who choose Pascal. Okay, that's all. All right, congratulations. So someone said that she already forgot all the law. Okay, I hope you know now, maybe at least one. Pascal's law. <laughs> okay, move on to the next question. All right, an electron is dot 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 dot. Is it positively charged? Is it negatively charged? Is it electrical charge? Hmm, I don't know. Okay. Fifty people. Okay, I can see that. Okay. Okay, I actually okay, I can see that you guys answer this question so fast because it just asks you what an electron is. But first of all, I want to explain that an electron is in an atom. As I mentioned before, in atom consists of electron, consists of proton, and also a neutron. And first of all, we need to cancel the electrical charge answer because an electron is not electrical charge, and the answer life is positive charge, neutral charge, and also negatively charged. And an electron is a negatively charged because the positive charge is for the proton, and for the neutral charge is for the neutron because it has no charge and that's the answer is an electron okay, is a negatively charged okay see so i can see ahmed zaim and arkana sambath answered negative uh, they can join the competition already okay okay next question <laughs> A slice of potato was immersed in a solution. It was then found that the potato cell became dirty. In what type of solution the slice of potato was immersed? Is it hypotonic, hypotonic, isotonic? Hmm. We'll see, we'll see. This question is kind of confusing. Oh, I don't I should have said that so I'm going to be All right, Sarah. <laughs> this question is kind of lengthy and for like what you say is confusing. Um, well. <clears throat> Oh, people are confusing about hypotonic and hypotonic. And there's one person who answered isotonic. All right. So in this question, the cue that we uh, need to see is um, immersed in a solution and also the <clears throat> condition of the potato cell after immersed in solution, it will become a turgid. So the highlight that here is turgid. So it can't be isotonic uh, because Isotonic, um, oh, I mentioned, I forgot to mention that this whole process is osmosis, which means that um, it is the movement of water from lower concentration to higher concentration. So in isotonic solution, there will be no net uh, movement of water. So before and after of the condition of the potato cell will be the same, okay? And why the answer is hypotonic? Because, um, what the process of osmosis itself, um, the 
solution is the hypotonic solution is a lower concentration compared to the potato cells uh, the concentration of water in the potato cells so the water from the hypotonic solution it will move into the potato cell cells so the condition will become a tergite so this is why it is a hypotonic if it is a hypotonic solution the potato will become a flaccid which means it decrease in size decrease in uh, mass so that is why it's hypotonic all right, all right good sorry. explanation thank you so much chelsea okay uh chelsea to those who don't know like, what is tergite can you like explain generally all what right. is tergite? all right okay tergite um i think um i think a simple um, example if we see a plant or flower you know when we water water them when we water them it will like um bloom really beautiful you know it means it's turgid like <laughs> it's in a perfect uh like it, it becomes become fresh fresh become fresh okay. all right and flesh it uh it will become like wheel you know so it will decrease the size Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Chelsea. Right. So Nagendra, Nagendra, Nagan say, saya kentang. Same lah. I also put it too. <laughs> All right. Next question. Roll the next question, please. Okay. What is the first element in periodic table? So this is the time for you to get out your periodic table. Helium, lithium, hydrogen, oxygen. Five seconds on the clock. Okay. Chemistry leading. I can see one biology student. Go bio. <laughs> All right, chemistry, please go on. Okay, for this question, uh, as it mentioned in the question, it asks you what is the first element in periodic table? And also, the, and of course, the answer is hydrogen. Why is it? Because it is, it is the, has the small atom in the periodic table. And I, I can say, uh, there is some of you answer the question helium. It's already uh, explained in the previous question. Helium is in group 18, which is the noble gas, and it's not the first element in this periodic table. And also lithium, lithium in group one or in group one as the hydrogen. But why it is not the first element? Because it has a bigger number of atomic number compared to the hydrogen, and oxygen is not the first element because it is in the group 16. All right, thank you, Aisha. Now we're gonna take a look at the next question. Hmm. So what's the next question? Is it from physics department? Okay, voltage is defined as the flow of electricity, which results from the ordered directional movement of electrically charged particles. Is it true or is it false? Even the questions complicated. Okay, time is ticking. All right, time's up. Okay, we will have Faris to explain the definition. Okay, uh, all right. Ah, physics. Okay, uh, for this question, uh, okay, this question is similar with number nine. I would say that because it's based on fact, that's true. So, uh, which mean which mean we need to understand the definition of the voltage itself. The voltage definition stated that the amount of the the potential difference between two points are equal to the amount of work per charge that is required to move a positive phase charge between those points. So uh, the final answer will be false. It doesn't similar with the question. All right. Question is false. I mean, sorry, the answer is false. Okay, next question. Okay, what is the product resulting from combination of what? 
oxygen and carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen and carbon. This one is easy. Do the viewers know the answers? Okay, Aisha. Okay, for this question. Okay, congratulations, guys. You guys answered this question correct, which is hydrogen and oxygen atom. And it's not the oxygen and carbon molecules or oxygen and carbon atoms because carbon is not included to produce the water. <laughs> okay, so the answer is hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Like M. Fizzy said in the comment section, H to the O say ho, ho, ho. Okay, next question, please. Next question, please. Yeah. Okay, which organelle possesses two membrane, double membrane? Hmm. Mitochondria, lysosome. Hmm. Take a look at the picture. What kind of cells is this? Is it animal cells, plant cells? Okay, time's up. All right, so chemistry is still on fire. First, please. Okay, Chelsea. Yes. Which uh, one? All right. Oh, okay. This question um kind of like uh, hard if we don't know the don't know the terms of the organelle, don't know the structure of the organelle. But there's a figure given. Okay, so maybe people are asking, maybe the audience are asking, like, what is double membrane? Okay, double membrane is um a membrane. Double membrane is an organelle that have two layer of membrane, which is the outer uh, layer and the inner layer. So, um, in generally, in eukaryotic cells, uh, there are three organelles that have a double membrane bonded organelles, which is a nucleus, mitochondria, and chloroplasts. Okay, so in this uh, question, it shows that animal uh, cells, so it wouldn't be a chloroplast, okay? So, it will, uh, it should be, it may be like, uh, mitochondria or nucleus, but the choices of answer only have mitochondria, so it will be the correct answer of mitochondria. Okay, and if we look at the uh, diagram itself of mitochondria, okay, uh, if you look at the diagram, we have the outer layer, uh, if you could remember the diagram, in uh, orange color, and the inner member, uh, in, inner membrane of mitochondria is the one that highly folded. So that's why mitochondria is have a double membrane organelle. All right. <laughs> All right. Very clear. I really like your explanation, Chelsea. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, volume of cone is equal to half volume of cylinder, or is it half volume of pyramid, or is it one over three volume of the cylinder? Do you still remember the formula? We'll see. We'll see. Okay, time's up. All right, chemistry still leading. I see you, chemistry. Okay, I know. Okay. Wow, this question is easy. This I think this question is more more easiest question ever. Like you have to understand, you have to 
memorize two formulas that we have learned in elementary school or high school. So the formula for cylinder, which is pi r square and times with h, the height of the cylinder. And the volume of cone does times with one over three. You can insert the cone into the cylinder if you make a cube up uh, a cylinder with a block. It's easy. Yes, yeah, it's easy. But kata Aina Anissa. <laughs> okay, next question. Please. So current is directly proportional to the resistance in the circuit. Is it true or is it false? 10 seconds left. All right, time's up. Okay, let's see who's leading. All wow. right, music, right. finally, <laughs> finally. Now I can do it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> oh, this question is, is quite easy because it's it's flashed back all our memory in our video, in our secondary school when our physics teacher teaches us. So this question is more like to to understand the question, we need to know the Ohm's law. What is the Ohm's law? Ohm's law is basically V equals to IR. So this means that uh, the current is inversely proportional, not directly proportional, but inversely proportional to the resistance. However, the current is also directly proportional to the voltage. So the answer would be false. It's, it is not directly proportional. All right. Thank you, Faris. So someone said in the comment, the formula V is equal to IR. Yes, correct, Nora Ashikin. Okay, moving on to the next question. All right, the enzyme that is necessary for blood flow is is it amylase, thrombokinase, lipase, peptidase? This question is a bit hard, right, Chelsea? So five seconds left. Yes, yeah, Sarah. A little bit hard. Yes. Okay, we'll see if biology student can make a comeback. <laughs> All right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Chemist is the top one. It's okay. All right. Ooh, I'm surprised also that they are able to answer thermokinase. Maybe they still remember uh, a type of enzyme when they're learning uh, during high school or during matriculation. It's a good thing. Okay. All right. So I will like uh, uh, discuss about this uh, enzyme. So amylase. Emylase, lipase, and peptidase, it obviously, if you recall back, you know, during high school or matriculation, it is for enzyme for uh, digestion. Emylase catalyzes the hydrolysis of starch into sugar, while lipase is catalyzed the hydrolysis of fats into uh, fatty acids and glycerol, while peptidase is uh, catalyzing the hydrolysis of a protein. So obviously, it can't be the answer, okay? So Thrombokinase, for those who like don't know what is thrombokinase, it is for it convert the prothrombin into thrombin as blood starts to clot. So when we uh, injure ourselves and it start to bleeding, so this enzyme will help our blood to like clotting and stop it from bleeding. So yes, that is the answer for this question. All right, so thrombokinase <laughs> will convert prothrombin into thrombin, right, Chelsea? Yes, Sarah. All right, just to confirm. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> okay, 5 plus 9 minus 6. 
times four. Hmm. Okay. I see. Does anyone know the answers in the comment section? So I guess this one we have to follow the bot mass rule, right? Okay. Aqua, you just hit negative ten. We'll see if you got this correct. Okay, so three people answered negative ten. Yes, Megabron said bot mask. Yes, this one have to use bot mask. All right. Oh, I see mathematics on top. Come back. Okay, I know. Yes, someone not got the wrong answer. Okay, go Max. Okay, for this question, it's quite easy, but it will be tricky if you don't know the concept. Okay, for this question, we can use the concept of the acronym name BIDMAS, which stands for brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. For this question, firstly, we look at the question, there's no bracket. So the first thing that we have to take a look, which is multiplication. So we have to solve the multiplication first, which is six times four, which is 24. And then we have to follow the big mass acronym, which is the, sub, the addition, which is nine plus five, which, which we got 14. Then 14 will be 14 minus, minus with 30, with, 24, then we get negative 10. All but right. You use calculator also. Okay, so some of our viewers got this question correct. Congratulations. Okay, moving on to the last question of the day. Next question, please. Our last question. <laughs> All right, so what is the distance between two peaks of a wave called wavelength, frequency, amplitude, or millimeter? Hmm. Okay, Faris. Okay, Sarah. So now this in this question it asks what is the distance between two pieces of a wave called. Now I should be clear that it's if two pieces that are the same amplitude, so the distance between two consecutive consecutive pits, meaning the pits that are next next to each other. So what we call that phase, so we call it the wavelength. So the correct answer will be for wavelength. All right. Okay. Yep. The answer is wavelength. Okay. Can we go? Can we see the winners? Because that's the end of 20 questions in total. So we're going to take a look who's our top three in the leaderboard. And we will announce the top 20 contestants who are qualified for the second round on Monday, 21st December 2020 in our WhatsApp group. So YouTube uh, live viewers, you can stay tuned for the second round. Okay, wow, let's see. Congratulations to 207451 from Mathematics Department for leading the board. And then Physics on second place and also third place Physics. Okay, I see where the GP is. Ah, chemistry, fourth place. Congratulations, everyone. Wow, well, congratulations, the first place. <laughs> All right, so we will move on to Q&A sessions. Okay, let's take a look at some of the comments from our live viewers. All right, so first question 
from M. Fizi. Okay, this might be late, but can panel explain about what is osmosis? I believe Ramaya nak tahu. All right. Chelsea, I believe this is biology's question. Do you know? Yes, Sarah. This is uh, related to the one uh, question about the potato. All right, Fizi, I will answer the question. All right. So I will share. Osmosis is um, a type of diffusion, actually. And in biology, it usually um, happens in, related to cells. Okay. So osmosis is when a uh, substance it causes a semi-permeable membrane. So in order to balance the concentration of another substances, okay. So, um, so in biology actually, this is usually uh, when a solvent such as water flows into or out of a cells, and it depending on the concentration of a sol solute. For example, like is is it the solute is hypothesis a uh, high hypo uh, what we call that uh, or is it uh, isotonic hypotonic or hypotonic okay and actually osmosis is very very important in our daily life I will be I will give an uh, example the ex uh what what the use of osmosis in our daily life if you mm -hmm. remember if you um have been uh fan be uh fainted before or when you go to hospital and then this there is a solution that are given to you, you know, it call uh what a saline solution. So a saline solution is it has a concentration of uh soul that has a same uh, has a similar uh salt concentration in our body. So when we get the or uh, saline uh, concentration through the osmosis process so then we will have a uh, a balanced uh, salt concentration in our body so that is the importance of osmosis in our daily life <laughs> so i will be clear all right thank you so much so i'm busy do you understand now like what is osmosis <laughs> okay moving on to the next question from mohammed hilmi is the frequency affect the wavelength? All right. So does frequency affect the wavelength? Physics. Yeah, I so. Yes. Okay. So why does the frequency wave will as will affect the wavelength? So okay, when we need, when we look at the formula and we see that higher frequency will we gain after the low the low the shorter wavelength and the lower frequency we gain the higher wavelength. So due to the frequency of waves, due to the formula, the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. Okay, that's all. All right, Muhammad Hilmi, does that answer your question? I hope it does. And then we have maybe last question from LQM Kim. So he asked, is learning physics beneficial for us in our daily life so any panel can answer this question this is a general question yeah uh, so uh yes the answer will be yes because what uh, <laughs> my teacher my teacher uh said to me one thing that i remember uh yeah i remember until now that the base of our learning is math the second layer will be physics and the third one will be the chemist and the final will be the bio so the, if so in the in the bio and the chemist there will be also <laughs> physics however overall this is math okay that's all do you guys agree with that <laughs> he said that well it is last level i'm sad i know sir i'm so sad oh my god <laughs> no, all right no, I so mean that. <laughs> is it also in biology, right? Mm, okay, okay, I get it. But biology is live. Okay. Oh, never mind. So, Nagan Ren Nagan, so this is from Sara. Which subject, biochemy, physics, and math is tough? And which subject do you recommend? Okay. <laughs> um. Personally, I think physics. I just don't click with physics. I can't do physics. That's why I took um, biology. And yes, I recommend biology. Biology is very fun because you work with animal and plants, you know. We have labs, we dissect frogs, we dissect birds. Ah, that's, that's just me. 
this answer for this question. The answer. Sorry. The answer, with, the, the answer for this question, I think, no, what is it? What the is answer it? Will be what your passion is. What is your love? Do you love chemists or do you love physics or do you love biology or do you love mathematics? It's not, it doesn't necessarily it hard or not. It's about our, your love in passion on what you want. How do you want to spend your time with? Do you want to spend mm -hmm. your time with numbers or plants or cards or atoms? It depends on yours. So for my, as in my experience, uh, just put aside all, all the hardest, all the harder tasks or nothing else, anything that challenge, just put aside, just focus on your passion. If you focus on your passion, you will, you will fortunately become successful person in the world. Yeah. Wow, Faris, I love your answer. Wow, so deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah, it's true. To All right. So out there, it's true. Hiya, Chelsea. <laughs> All right, so it's almost 10 p.m. I guess with that, we've reached the end of first session of FASA Colosseum. So let's give the participants a big round of applause for completing the quiz. And hey, to you live viewers for sticking up with us till the end. And thank you to all panelists for joining in. I learned a lot today. So questions that are not answered in the comment section during our Q&A will be shared on our Instagram or Facebook page FASA, all right? All right, so I'm Sarah as the host for tonight. I would like to apologize if I've done any mistakes throughout the event. Thank you to all the lecturers, committees, participants, and YouTube live viewers for contributing and for joining the first stage of FASA Coliseum. Thank you so much for your time and for your data. Uh, so participants, please check our WhatsApp group for the Google Form link to mark your attendance. And no worries, we do not forget about our dear YouTube viewers. Please check comment section for the Google Form link or you can scan the QR code that will be presented on the screen after this. That's all from me. Thank you. Till we meet again next week. Bye.